Now that the hype surrounding the Steam Deck has died down, is it still worth buying and is it deserving of the title of the greatest PC handheld? What's going on everyone, Havoc here. So I've been using the Steam Deck exclusively since I got it almost a month ago. I bought the 1TB OLED limited edition version. I wanted to do a review after the hype died down surrounding the device and as always I look at these things from the viewpoint of an average consumer. So if you're looking for a super in-depth and detailed review to cover every single aspect of the device, well, this won't be it. Here's the breakdown of what we're going to cover. Hardware, software, performance, display, battery life, comfort, and lastly, my opinion on the device and if it's worth buying. So let's get started with the hardware. On the surface, it looks like the same exact device, but we have a lot of differences between the old Steam Deck and the new one. Let's dive into all of them here. We have an updated Wi-Fi 6E, so that means even faster downloads and a new Bluetooth module. They also added a third antenna at the top of the device, which gives us better Bluetooth performance, especially when it's docked. And one of my favorite features is that they added support for wake from Bluetooth controllers. So whenever my Steam Deck is docked, I just pick up my Xbox controller and I can turn it on. It works seamlessly. And to be honest, I didn't even know that this was a feature until I accidentally turned on the Steam Deck by clicking my Xbox controller when I was trying to pair it back to my Xbox. So I was pretty pleasantly surprised about that. Audio has been improved as well. We have better bass response and they also added in support for using the onboard mic simultaneously with the 3.5mm headphone connector. The joysticks were updated too. Valve adjusted the stick material and shape for increased grip and dust resistance. The shoulder button switch mechanisms also have improved tactility. This was an issue with the older Steam Decks where it wouldn't register your clicks properly, so I'm glad to see that they fixed that. We also have all new redesigned trackpads for improved edge detection along with better haptics feel and precision. Battery has been upgraded from a 40 watt hour to 50 watt hours. Power supply cable length is now 2.5 meters or an 8 feet from the 1.5 meters on the previous deck. And the deck is held together by the new torque screws which thread into the metal housings. Now, I know this helps to prevent stripping, but I much rather prefer the Phillips because I feel that the majority of people have Phillips screwdrivers versus the Torx. We also have improved thermal module thickness and performance which leads to the device running a lot cooler and quieter. You get a little orange button at the top to differentiate the old versus the new deck. It still has a 3.5mm headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. The CPU is an AMD Zen 2 architecture with the AMD RDNA 2 GPU along with 16 gigs of RAM. They updated the APU to 6 nanometers for better efficiency and the memory has been upgraded to 6400 megatransfers per second from 5500 from the previous deck. And lastly, there are some other updates to improve easiness of repairing the device, which shouldn't matter to you as a consumer unless you plan on tinkering with the internals of the device. But if you're considering just changing out the solid state drive, that's going to be as easy as opening up the back and popping the old one out and the new one in. Moving on to software, the first time you get everything set up and you log into the Steam Deck, it's going to boot up Steam in big picture mode. This is the closest thing to a console-like experience we get on handhelds. It's super easy to use and navigate. So if you didn't know by now, the Steam Deck runs on Linux. If you plan on playing the Steam Deck as it's intended out of the box without wanting to download any other gaming launchers, then you won't even know or care about this. If you plan on downloading, let's say like Epic Launcher or Blizzard so you can play your games in the other libraries, then you will have to go to ULED's desktop mode and that will be your first encounter with the true operating system of the device. It may seem daunting at first, but it's really not that difficult to use. I would say it's not as user friendly as Windows but it's definitely not hard to figure things out, especially with a million tutorials on YouTube. And once you start getting familiar with the device, it becomes pretty easy like anything else. Valve also improved the memory power management firmware and improved resume time by 30%. We can also fast suspend and resume games all with the click of the power button, similar to how Xbox has fast resume. This works very well without any hiccups. Now for performance. So let's just get this straight right off the bat. Is this device stronger than the Ally or Legion Go? No. They are rocking the Z1 Extreme chips, which are way better. So if the Steam Deck had that, then it would be a completely different story. But since the APU inside the old Steam Deck and the new one is the same, you don't really see exponential gains in performance, but you do see around like five to eight FPS gain in certain games. Nothing that's gonna blow you away. However, the performance of the device as a whole is what's phenomenal. It works flawlessly. I mean, there are no hangups, no lags, no stutters in software. I can't really say anything negative about it in the time that I used it and I haven't run into any issues this past month with it. Moving on over to display. The overall size of the screen is the same but the display active area has increased by 0.4 inches from 7 to 7.4. The display is a 1280 by 800 HDR OLED display. 
Now, you might be thinking like myself that this is a downgrade from 1080p, but to be honest, with a screen size that is this small, it's very difficult to make out 1080p versus the Steam Deck's native resolution because of the pixels per inch. The refresh rate has been increased from 60Hz to 90Hz, and now the peak brightness goes up to 1000 nits with HDR and 600 nits with SDR, which allows us to game pretty easily in a brightly lit room or outdoors. And also, it gets super dim when playing it before going to bed, so now you don't have to worry about your retinas being burned before going to sleep. Talking about the display, as the name suggests, the Steam Deck that I have is the OLED version. It has an OLED panel instead of the LCD that is on the other version than the older model. I got this one with the anti-reflective finish, but I ended up installing a glossy screen protector and I couldn't be happier. The anti-reflective was nice, but for me personally, if I'm looking at an OLED panel, the more glossy, the better, because I feel like the blacks are much more richer on a glossy screen versus a matte or anti-reflective screen. And I'll put a little pop-up here to show you what it looks like just having the normal anti-reflective screen versus putting on a glossy screen protector. Okay, so the battery has been upgraded from 40 watt hours to 50 watt hours. This means that we get around 30 to 50% more battery life because of the bigger battery and improved performance of the device. We also get faster charging and it can go from 20% all the way up to 80% battery in around 45 minutes. The light will now turn green when the Steam Deck is charged instead of staying white. For me, this is a truly portable device because of the battery life alone. Comparing it to the Ally and Legion Go, this device blows them out of the water thanks to its battery life, and I'll talk about this more later on. Speaking on comfort, since the Steam Deck is now 5% lighter than before, it comes in weighing at 640 grams or 1.41 pounds. For comparison, the Ally weighs 1.34 pounds or 608 grams, and the Legion Go weighs 1.88 pounds or 854 grams. It's surprising to me that even though it weighs a bit more and is physically larger than the Ally, the device doesn't feel heavy. Its weight to balance distribution is great, and I don't feel any fatigue holding it up for hours while gaming. The Ally does feel heavier to hold, and I feel that the weight is all in the center of the device rather than spread out like the Steam Deck. And the Steam Deck also runs cool and quiet, and I have yet to hear the fans running loudly on any games that I've played so far. Alright, so here is my take on the Steam Deck. It's a great device, but it's restricted to Steam Launcher natively. So if you have a huge Steam library, then this isn't going to be a problem. But if most of your games are on the other launchers, then that should be a point of consideration. That doesn't mean that they won't work, but you're going to have to jump through some hoops to get them on the Steam Deck, and then they won't run as seamlessly like on a Windows handheld. If you want a device that you can run emulators on, then you can get Emudeck, which is free for Steam Deck users and it's super seamless to set up and runs very very well. The resolution is 1280 by 800 and it's lower than the other PC handhelds like the Ally and Legion Go, but it's really not an issue since I haven't noticed any significant decrease in quality. I played and I beat Control and I bumped up the resolution to 1080p when I docked it to my OLED TV and it worked perfectly fine. If you want a pick up and go device without tinkering, then this is for you. Just download the games you want and you're all set. You won't ever need to leave the big picture mode unless it's to get other launchers. You can also use this as a PC when it's docked and it works well that way too. I connected the keyboard and mouse and I was surfing the web to test things out and it was as simple as plugging in the peripherals and using them. The battery life is my favorite thing about the Steam Deck. I got about 4-5 to five hours playing Control Ultimate Edition and I capped the FPS at 45 and 90 hertz. TDP was at 10 and the brightness was set at 50%. While playing indie games, I got up to 10 hours by setting the TDP at 5 and capping the FPS at 45 and 90 hertz. The ergonomics of the device make it very comfortable to hold, likely due to the contour of the grips. It feels like you're holding a controller rather than like a Nintendo Switch. Okay, let's talk about the not so greats since not everything is all rainbows and sunshine when it comes to the device. If you plan on playing Game Pass, then that's going to be more difficult. You can download the Edge browser and play it on the browser, but that really depends on your Wi-Fi speed. Or the other option is dual booting Windows, which also doesn't work that well and it requires some more legwork to make it functional. I just think it's really not worth it in my opinion. I also didn't like how the joysticks felt. They just seemed off, like they were too small or too far from where my thumbs naturally rested. I much prefer the joysticks of Legion Go or Ally. So what I did was, I ended up buying some convex grips for them and I haven't had any issues since. It's a lot more comfortable and my thumbs just rest where they need to. The device feels premium and not so premium at the same time. And it might be due to the fact that since it's so well balanced that it almost feels cheap because of the lightweight. And the plastic does make creaks and squeaks when you're using it but that's just me being nitpicky. The Steam Deck isn't as powerful as the other handhelds and you realize it if you're trying to run certain games on higher settings whereas the Ally or Legion Go could power through them. 
The Steam Deck will have more frequent FPS drops, so you have to mess with the settings more to find that sweet spot. But that's not to say that it isn't capable. Control Ultimate Edition was the first game that I beat on the Steam Deck and I played it both handheld and docked and I was very pleased with the performance once I got the settings set to where I needed them to be. We also get an included carrying case which is a nice touch so I don't have to buy a separate one on my own. Okay, so the big question. Is the Steam Deck worth buying if you already have the other handhelds like the Ally or Legion Go? Or should you even consider getting the Windows handhelds? Maybe. The Steam Deck truly offers a console-like experience thanks to its quick boot and wake with controller feature. And thanks to its battery life, you won't be tethered to a wall. But is that enough to prompt you to buy it? Well, for me, since I wanted a truly portable device to play on the go, it's definitely worth the upgrade. You get an OLED display, better battery life, seamless console-like experience, and a very comfortable device. However, if you play mostly at home and you're okay with being plugged in, then there's really absolutely no need to buy the Steam Deck. Since it won't be much of an upgrade and rather it would likely be a downgrade because of the weaker internals. Especially if you're playing plugged in, then you can play the Ally or Legion Go at higher TDPs and not worry about battery life at all. Alright, as always, this video is not intended to hate on one handheld or the other. I own the Ally, the Legion Go, and now the Steam Deck and I enjoy all of them. But I have to say the Steam Deck has moved up to the number one spot on the podium for the best handheld for me. So hopefully you learned something from the video and it made your decision easier to make. Also keep in mind that this isn't really a Steam Deck 2, but rather it's a Steam Deck 1.5. So I'm super excited to see what the future will bring. Well, that's all I have for you guys. Let me know in the comments below which one you decided to get and what games you beat first on your handheld. Thanks for watching. Havoc out.